Have you ever imagined a place where boats race and beautiful sunsets doze off into the night sky and fireworks burst in the air? Well, here in central Indiana, we have Geist Reservoir. And sure, it may not be the largest body of water in Indiana, that honor goes to Lake Monroe, 16 square miles southern Indiana. But that does not stop Geist from being a truly amazing place that we can all enjoy. The three of us were amazed by what we found, um, what we found out about Geist. Um, we're here to talk about um, Geist and how it was a great addition um, and how it grew the city of Indianapolis. It's a place that many of us, um, we sure didn't know a lot about it, and I'm sure many of you guys may not know like the history about Geist. Um, whether it's the historical um, factor of Geist that interests you or the variety of ideas, it, Geist offers an endless supply of things to do. And you may be wondering, as I said, uh, about the history of Geist. So what is the history of Geist? So the Geist Reservoir used to be is, is um, on top of what used to be a small farming community called Germantown. In the late 1890s and early 1900s, that is what, um, what Geist Reservoir now looks like. As you can see, there's you know, small barns and small covered bridges that littered throughout the area. They said um, that there was only three or four stores throughout the entire town of, of Germantown, and there was one schoolhouse and one church. And then that was the only thing that was in Germantown. But the most notable factor about it was that it was in a valley with a river running through it. And so Clarence H. Geist, who was the owner of the Indianapolis Water Company, saw that, or noticed that Indiana, or Indianapolis, is the only city, major city, in the entire U.S. that is not located by a water source. And so now this is a problem because people have to drink and you need it to bathe and water is a very important substance. And so he saw the need for water and he was going to profit off of this. And so what he did was he purchased all of Germantown and throughout about 10 years of planning, in about 1914, the Geist Reservoir construction started. And the construction lasted about 30 years and ended in 1943. He died in between there, but the construction still did go on. So for about 30 years, it kind of left as just that, just a reservoir with absolutely nothing around it. Um, in about 1970, they started doing debates. What should Geist be? Should, it cont should we double the size so that we can supply more water for Indianapolis? Or should we start to develop it and put houses in things? And so obviously, um, as you can see now, we chose houses. And so they made two or three um, small subdivisions and it just rapidly picked up the growth of the town. And so there was tons and tons of houses and it exponentially grew until what we have now where it's home to hundreds or thousands of people and uh, of the upper class. So that is about how it, um, how it is now. So as you can see here, um, you have the Noblesville up here. So this map's about the same perspective. And you can see that these are all the roads and streams and things. That is it. And as you can see over here, that it's almost entirely developed. All these little dots and things are streets and stuff. And so this whole thing, there's probably that many roads in just one quarter mile now. So as you see, it just exponentially grew into an amazing place that's now home to many influential people that were brought in because of Geist Reservoir. So now we'll go over to Andrew to tell us what they do. As he said, Geist is home to many rich, um, powerful, and influential people. Now those people like to indulge in certain extravagant um, activities. One of those is the IYC, the Indianapolis Yacht Club. Now this um, yacht club, it's a private boating slash social club. Um, it was founded in 1956 and for the last 62 years it has been that, a private boating club. Um, it offers a ton of amenities, such as um, a private club experience, a heated pool, um, there's game rooms, there's a main dining hall that's very nice. Um, also, there's a picnic area, secure parking, and also it offers 24 access to boat slips and boat launches. And though each slip offers electricity and water to those boats, which is very handy if you have a yacht, you want to hook it up to the electricity so you can watch um, some football on your yacht. What gets, nothing gets better than that. Um, now the second thing is the ISC. That is the Indianapolis Sailing Club. Now this offers a bunch of cool things um, such as a sailing camp and racing. Um, I personally have always wanted to try the sailing camp because my grandfather was a sailor and I've always wanted to learn how to do that. So that's something that's really cool that only the ISC offers on Geist. Um, also the races 
Um, they have like sometimes Tuesday, Wednesday night races, which is really cool. If you look out on Geist, you might be able to see some sailboats racing. Now this was this was founded in 1954 by a guy, by a guy named Jack Mensner. Um, he was German from Germantown, and he said he said that he had sailing in his blood. So him and 13 of his buddies got together, created the ISC, and now today it's a huge thing. Now our expert, a good friend of mine, also a manager and a maintenance manager at Geist Marina, his name is Blake Forbes. Now I asked him a couple questions, um, two specifically really profound um, questions about Geist, um, and I asked him what makes Geist a special place, and his answer to that was Geist is special because it's a vacation destination. He said that he's seen people from all over the country who come to Geist to experience it. And how cool is that, that we have a vacation destination just in our backyard? And it may not seem that extravagant to us since we've lived around it, but for other people, it's a really cool place. Um, also, I asked him, what makes the marina special? And he said that the marina makes um, the marina special because it allows the average person to have that Geist um, day on the lake experience. For example, um, renting pontoons and kayaks, um, it's fairly expensive, like $100 for a couple hours, but it's a whole pontoon. So if you had 10 people, divide that, 10 bucks per person for a day on the lake, it doesn't get much better than that. Also, just around the marina, there's certain um, uh, restaurants that you can go to and experience, and you can also rent tubes. So you can have a calm day on the lake, as I said, nice kayaking, and maybe a pontoon, just relaxing with your friends and your family, or you can have a crazy, exciting day out on the lake. Now, when people think of central Indiana, how, much, how often do you think they think of jet skiing and tubing? I would say nobody from outside of Indiana thinks that we'd be doing these types of things. And so it's really cool to see people jet skiing and tubing, and I know by the end of the day, if you did that, you'd be saying, what a rush, like that was crazy. Um, another, another really fun, sometimes relaxing thing to do is fishing. Um, a big thing, I know kids at our school compete in like a Bassmaster High School competitions out on Geist. Griffin Fernandez, you may know him, James Helfer, they, pro, they compete in these activities. Also just recreational, nice relaxing. And like I said, the rich, the famous, and the influential, if anybody knows who that is, that's Paul George out on Geist fishing. So it really shows that a lot of people um, indulge in this activity. Now, I ask myself, what kind of fish can you catch in Geist? So Alex is going to explain. So there are many types of fish as you can see up here, but the main ones that most people go fishing for are bass, bluegill, crappie, and catfish, and then uh, sunfish as well. Um, so I'll go over just some basic uh, tips on catching these types of fish. So for um, bass, you're going to go up along shorelines, either in a boat or from shore, and you want to go up to places that are heavily wooded or have lilies or algae or things, because bass like to stay in the cooler shade, shaded areas that also has some cover from the tide in. Um, so with the bluegill, those are going to be easier for you guys to catch. You can go from any shoreline, um, and you just go uh, pretty much anywhere. They're throughout the entire lake um, with the worm and bobber, and that's just, just let it sit there, and uh, you'll catch some. So with crappie, those you need a boat or a dock for. They're in very deep water. Um, they're normally no higher than four or five feet um, down. And then uh, you just use a, winna, or a minnow on a leader, um, and you can catch those. Those are fairly easy ones to catch as well. And then catfish, you can go to headwaters or rivers. Um, like at Geist Park, there's tons of people that catfish there. And that you can just use chicken gizzards or necks or something with a lot of uh, strength to it to catch those. And then uh, bass, you can use a big spinning bait or some just flashy bait, and you just cast that as well, as I said earlier. So those are the different types of uh, fishing that you can do on Geist. And so that can either be for like your fun day, or just kind of calm, uh, but there's also some more uh, exciting things that you can do. So we'll go to Andrew for those. Definitely some more exciting things to do, like the 4th of July. Now I know for one, 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays because I love America and I love fireworks. And I have been to Washington, D.C. Um, in the mall where the memorials, and I have been there on 4th of July and seen the beautiful fireworks. And I've also been to Mount Rushmore and seen the fireworks over the president's head. And I still believe that the 4th of July fireworks on Geist are my favorite because I'm always surrounded by my friends and my family. And another thing that I really appreciate it is 
It's in my backyard, so it really feels like home. It feels like America. I think it's the best way to spend that beautiful holiday. Now, as he mentioned, Geist Park is more of a calm place to go. It's not really well known. Um, most people didn't really know about it. It's a 17-acre park. Um, there's a canoe launch. Um, there's fishing, green space. There's a, ne there's a nature trail, hiking, biking. Um, there's picnic tables. And one of the things that it's really famous for is bird watching. Um, there's a diverse ecosystem there, so it's really good to go and observe wildlife. And whether you enjoy hiking, observing wildlife, or just being outdoors, Geist Park is a perfect place to go. And I have enjoyed one of my favorite experiences on Geist. Here, a friend of mine blew up a tube, we just put it in the water, and we just sailed down the river. And so that really shows the accessibility to Geist. And I'm sure everybody, has anybody been to that tree? Show of hands, anybody been to that tree on the rope swing? That's, that's so much fun, that's so much fun. And the fun doesn't stop when the summer ends though. During the fall, Geist Park, beautiful, beautiful. Nature trail, biking, ice fishing during the winter, a little dangerous, but you take your risks, you know? Ice fishing, skating, a lot of people do it, it's a lot of fun. Now does anybody know what this is? Uh, Max is gonna explain what this is and the importance of it going on into the future. Yeah, so around Oyo Road, Geist Reservoir is blossoming a new expansion for public recognition, which is where it's, it's going to be built around here. This is Premier Waterfront Park, 70 acres, or as the word title is called, The Cove. This will feature triathlon races, passive space, paddle boarding, sand volleyball, bird destination, kayak rentals, bike trails, fishing pier, shelter, public beaches, uh, uh, playscapes, uh, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, cardiac exercises, a tower they can climb up and see through, uh, and a lot of that stuff sounds both old and new, and it sounds a lot, but Mayor Fadness himself explains that the reason why this is being built is for people to connect more to the great access of guys. He believes that many people just stand on the bridge and watch the activities. They don't actually join in. They don't inverse into guys. So, so uh, a couple years ago, my dad worked at WRTV6, and uh, he actually got he actually got a chance to uh, actually go into a helicopter and see guys in a bird eye view. And it was, he said it was wonderful. It was just majestic and lovely. So imagine all this space, all of this, but flourished further with the cove. That's, that's just a lot. To sum it up, the cove is a park being built because people, because outside public needs to immerse into guys both all the new activities so, it, so guys can continue growing. It really is just an element that makes Geist a very big part of Indiana. Geist Reservoir is a truly special place because of the fascinating history, the, uh, the pleasure activities, the future, all of that makes Geist the best and first attraction to go to Indiana because of just how it has done so much for it. I mean, just, if the knowledge of Geist was more common, do you think people around the world will see Indiana differently? Think of guys. Well, think of what happened if guys never existed. Like it just, like Indiana was without guys. So why is it, so why is fish is great? I say guys was well.